Well, here's a beautiful 1966 Oldsmobile Tornado finished in trumpet gold at the Eyes on Design show in Gross Point, Michigan that took place on Father's Day. Just a beautiful car overall. 1966 was the first year of the Tornado. In that year, it was introduced along with the 1966 Buick Riviera with which it shared a platform, although the Tornado had the unitized power package under hood and front-wheel drive. Well, the Riviera eschewed the front-wheel drive and was rear-wheel drive, kind of a traditional layout, at least from an engineering standpoint. And the Tornado had a three-quarter length frame that terminated at the rear leaf shackle with its single-leaf rear spring, whereas the Riviera had a full coil suspension at all four corners. This 1966 Tornado has this beautiful linear grille and an overall grille that kind of mimics the Cord coffin nose, the Cord 810, as well as the wheels have a similar look to that chord. GM was trying to evoke some of those memories in buyers of the chords of yesteryear because both vehicles were front wheel drive. And here you can see those wheels a little bit better. This car actually has the correct style TFD tires with the thin white wall stripe. It's pretty far out from the wheel. That was something that was unique to the Tornado. They had a specific tire design for them. Like I said, it was called the TFD Tire. And I'm guessing this person got theirs from Diamondback because that's the only place that I know that you can get custom tires like this. And this is one of my favorite angles on the car, this rear three-quarter. That feature line that goes from above the window and then basically creates the entire rear form Part of that is shared with the Buick Riviera, along with the side glass, the windshield, the A-pillars. And you really wouldn't know it because the cars look so different, but they are both beautiful. The Tornado, of course, was famous for these wheel flares and arches that are so copied even today. And out back, you have this super cool rear that was made to mimic a aerodynamic shape similar to the Ferrari bread van with this terminated rear end. At least that's what one of the junior designers on the program told me. And I love how it kind of flares outboard at the back of the vehicle as opposed to tapering inward. This person also has kind of a humorous license plate, the XP784. That was the code name for the Tornado that was used for its development. Here again, you see that feature line, and it's great that it's a sunny day and this is a metallic paint because it really shows off that feature line. You can see the trunk here on the sunny day is super bright and illuminated and then the light on the other side here on the body side is much more muted because it's in the shade it's just a great look overall 1966 like i said was the first year of the tornado it had a base price of 4617 dollars if you got the standard hardtop coupe or the deluxe hardtop coupe which this is that was 4812 dollars base price they out they sold far more deluxe hardtop coupes than they did regular hardtop coupes. The deluxe, they sold about 35,000 units. The hardtop coupe, they sold only 6,000 units. And here you can see these famous Fender, I guess, pontoons or blade forms up front. And 1966 was the only year for the headlights with those eyebrows over top of them. In 1967, those eyebrows would be eliminated and that linear grill would be changed to an egg crate grill. This car also has the optional cornering lamps that you can see there that, at least to me, resemble fish gills. Again, that was not standard. And while this car's platform is shared with the Riviera, the Tornado had a significantly longer front overhang than the Riviera, just to give it, I suppose, a more stately presence and make those fender pontoons all the more prevalent. Let's switch down to the interior. The interior of the Tornado is another unique piece of automotive history here. This has the standard bench seat, and you notice that floor mat that is part of the, actually the floor that has the chrome trim around it on the driver's side, and then this little floor mat that is a loose floor mat on the passenger side with the Oldsmobile logo. By the way, that floor mat on the driver's side has the correct texture. That is what these look like from the factory. So this individual has gotten the correct reproduction. And this is a rare car with a number of options on it, one being the headrests. That was something that you didn't see on many of these 1966 Tornados, but it was a factory option. You could also see that the car has the rear defogger on the package shelf. And headrests were available on these, the Riviera, the Eldorado. It was starting to become in vogue at this time for safety. 
But buyers had to check the box for it, and it just was not something that was typically ordered. Let's walk around to the driver's side now and look at the interior. You have a one-year-only beautiful four-spoke wheel and the rolling drum speedometer that the Tornado used that gave instant readouts. This car also has the optional parking brake light that you see there beneath the dash, that little red light that's not illuminated. This is a car that does not have automatic climate control, which you could get in these. You could get Oldsmobile's Comfortron climate control. This just has manual AC, which is far better than the Comfortron system. Here's a better close-up of one of the wheels in the Tornado. Again, these were inspired by the Cord 810 wheels, although they have a different center and clearly the Oldsmobile Rocket logo. This person has had these correctly painted. Oftentimes the paint is worn off on these from the stiff brush car washes of the 1960s. That paint didn't last very long. And as I mentioned, that line that goes from the A-pillar all the way back and forms the rear quarter panel the portion of that that was shared with the Riviera was that upper portion, and the stylus had to work together in order to make both cars look great. Again, I pointed out this license plate before, but it says XP784. That was the Tornado's internal code name at General Motors. I have a friend who actually has a license plate XP784 on his car, I believe a Michigan plate. This person has ordered his historic plate from Ohio with that logo. And here's a, one more close-up of that rolling drum speedometer. There we go. Super, super cool. Works super functional. I don't know why they don't really use that anymore. It's great, and it is easy to read. And there's the climate control that you can see, the manual climate control system on the bottom left. And here is the correct floor mat texture grain. In case you're wondering, it's kind of got these like three or four horizontal lines and a little bit of a break and then a big thick horizontal line. And that pattern repeats over and over. So you can be on the lookout at your next local car show and see if the owner of a 66 Tornado has the correct floor mat texture. Overall, just a beautiful vehicle. One other piece of trivia here, that pronounced fender form in the original models actually continued on and formed the base of the A-pillar. But... That was deemed too strong of a design statement and a cue that would be picked up by buyers, and they would soon recognize that the Tornado Riviera and Eldorado all shared that A-pillar if it was such a strong design cue, and thus it was muted to the form here, and you'd really never know across the Eldorado Riviera and Tornado that they all have that same A-pillar and front windshield glass. Hope you enjoyed this video about this Trumpet Gold 1966 Oldsmobile Tornado. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.